So AM stocks a large variety of CNC routers. And well, here's yet another one. Let's unbox the 600 by 900 Easy Route CNC router from AM. In the box, there is a control box, the support panels and covers. You have a remote control unit, two submersible pumps, a power cable, and a set of bits. Also a set of tools and accessories to help you with the installation. And of course, the support frames. So you start by building the frame. As you will see, the stickers on there will reflect everything you have to do and how you have to do it. There's a front part and there's a back part. There's a bottom and there's a top. Just follow the stickers and align it like that. You will see that the shapes on the parts align. So it's pretty much very easy to match how the shapes are and how the body is. Hand tighten the screws before you use an Allen key or a screwdriver. What you're trying to do here is to make sure that by the time you tighten them, every part has been aligned and all the adjustments have been made. Once all that is done and your frame is set, you're pretty much ready to put the router on. The main router body is quite heavy, so I suggest that having four people mounting it would help. Firstly, line up the holes and then tighten. Now, mount the control box and secure it with screws from inside the box. All right. So the control box is done and what I've done now is I have installed the cable tray and I'm going to show you how to put this chain of connectors all the way to the motherboard there. Now the black conduits here need to be tightened on the aluminum frame that is at the top here just by two allen keys here. As we continue with the pipes inside the conduit you also need to tighten it right here and from this position you're going to have two clear pipes, these are going to run your water cooling system for the spindle. Next you're going to have a blue pipe, this is going to run your oil. Right, the other cables, all of them are going to run through the box here for the control unit and we're going to do all the electrical wiring inside. Now of your two green cables, I'm going to start with the first one here, which has five cables of different colors. Now on these cables, they will come loose and this lug is going to be in here. I'm going to show you how to wire each and every one of them. To start with, each label is on the cable. As you can see here, the white cable is written X0. The red cable is also written its own code. So what you're going to do is align with the writing on the motherboard here. What you're going to do is to first look at your motherboard where it says X origin. You're going to take your lug and match the position that it is 
with the cable that says X0, which is the white one. You're going to continue from there. You also have a cable that says 24V minus. That's going to be your ground cable. So you also match that pin with the ground connection on your motherboard, as you can see down here, which would be the second one from the right, like this. Lastly, on this X lug, you also have the red cable, which specifies 24V plus. That is your positive connection, and you're going to take it on the 24V plus port, which is going to be the first port here. And your lug is going to go in right like this. Still on the first green cable, you also have this cable here which says Y0. And all you want to do is to look for the Y port on the motherboard. Look for where it says Y origin, which is right here. And put the cable that says Y0 onto that position and then fit it right in. You're going to do the same for the Z axis. Firstly, get the cable that says Z0. Keep it there. Yes. After you get that cable, you're going to look for the port that says Z origin. Now on this port, you're going to align that connection by unscrewing this, putting this in, and then putting your lug back in. The second green cable only has two connections. The first cable is the yellow cable, and it writes here. So it is written here, cut. And what you want to do is to match this cable with the first position here on the motherboard, which also says cut. So cut goes to cut, and the other part, which is the white part, is a ground connection. The ground connection can go anywhere on the motherboard that there is a ground. In this case, I have chosen the ground on the Z axis position. All right, so now I'm going to put all my lugs in. Okay, so all my connections, which are the green cables for the motherboard, are done. Now we're going to move on to the black cables. Now your black cables are going to be labeled. You're going to see one written X, which is for the X axis, Z, which is for the Z axis, and Y, which is for the Y axis. And there is also one which is for the spindle, making a total of four cables. I'm going to start with the X. So every cable is going to be connecting onto the stepper motor driver. As you can see, X is going to go into X. So is Y and Z. Right. Now under each stepper motor driver, you're going to find two naked cables. Green, which is sometimes blue, and a red cable. What you're going to do is you're going to take the green cable, connect it into the lug that is coming onto the right foot cable for that driver. The green cable is going to come inside and the red cable is going to come outside. You're going to unscrew here so that you can fit it in and then you tighten it. As you can see, I've already done it for the other two drivers. You're going to see these two cables are in, the red and the green in this order, and I'm going to put my lug right in. Now, as you can see, three of my four black cables have already been plugged into their stepper motor drivers, and we have one more black cable remaining. Now the final black cable is the connection for the spindle. This you see here is the inverter. As you pop it from the bottom, you're going to find that the cable that is coming from the conduits has a yellow, green and red cable. Now these three cables here are going to be for the direction of your spindle. They are labeled U, V and W. Whichever way you plug them in onto the spindle, doesn't really affect anything on the operation, but just the direction of your spindle. So you can put it as UVW, UWV, or VWU, as long as you match the ports on the motherboard 
to this. Now for your air connections. You have a blue pipe and then there's two clear pipes which are for water. Now, as you'll be cutting materials like aluminum, you will be needing a liquid which will come out through here. The blue pipe is for this purpose as it will be running your oil. I'm going to plug it in straight into the pump and once it's in, it's tight. To allow my fluid to flow from the blue pipe, I'm going to need to have this pipe in the direction that the pipe is. This shows that the fluid is going to be flowing out. And I know what you're asking, how is this fluid going to be able to exit the bed? Let me show you. Can you see my hand over here? This is the drain pipe that's going to be used to take out all the water. All you're going to do is get a container down here or a hose through this pipe and then release the valve and all the water is going to flow out. So now what's left is the other submersible pump, which is for your water to cool the spindle. Now, the first connection is the same. Firstly, my pipe goes straight into this connector and once it's in, it's tight sealed. The second pipe is going to go straight into the water and basically it is going to be circulating the water in there and coming back. My water pump is submersible so I can dip it straight into the water. Right. And of course, not forgetting the power. All right, with all of that done, now what is left is to simply put the cover panels on and turn on our machine. Right, everything has been assembled now and all that's left for me to do is to plug in the controller and let me show you how to do that. Now you could thread this cable through the hole where all the other cables came in through but for demonstration purposes I'm just going to plug it straight through. This is a male connector and it's going to go straight onto the blue part which is the female connector. Once it's in, you screw it right through. Right, so with everything being done now, let me turn the machine on, see what it can do, and I'm going to show you the basics of how to operate it. Once your machine is connected to the power, you're going to start with this contactor here. Rule of thumb is down is always off, and this is on. After the contact is on, you put the emergency stop off, and you turn on the switching on knob. Once you do this, the lights turn on, and this here is for our inverter you're never really going to be using this except for these two buttons. Let's start. You will wait for your controller until it tells you ready here. Right now it says starting system, please wait. So we wait. Now, now that the machine is on, it's going to ask me, do I want to go back to the reference point for all the axes? All I have to do is simply press OK. Now, as you see, my machine is going to come back to the bottom left which is the machine homing position, as it is doing now. Now with my machine being on and everything set, my controller is on, I am ready to start cutting. So I'm going to go to the computer and whichever software I'm using to design, we have Easy Enroute, we have Artchem and all the other softwares you can use. I'm going to design a file and I'm going to put it in this flash drive and plug it straight into the machine. Here's where it goes. Right, now that my file is in, I'm going to show you how to open the file on the pad and we can start our job. Now with my USB disk plugged in, I'm going to open my pad and then go on the menu function. It's going to show me file management where I'm going to enter and I'm going to go to U-Disk files by using these arrows here. 
Once I open your disk files, I'm going to say copy file. And I'm going to choose the file that I want. These are the files currently in my flash drive. And I'm going to choose the one on top. I'm simply going to press enter and it's loaded. Now I'm going to go back, escape, escape, and go to internal files. Once I get here, I say enter and I will choose to load a file. And I'll choose the file which I just copied into the system. Once I do this, everything is ready and my file shows here. So with this being done, I'm going to set the origin and show you how we're going to start cutting. So let's just give it a quick dry run to show you how it cuts. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and to start off with, we have in the initial set, an initial set of bits with different sizes and the collets you will need to cut with. You also have these clamps that you're gonna to use to hold your material on the bed. Now, I hope you enjoyed the installation and the unboxing of our 6090 router, which is just one of our many range of machines that we have. Now remember, when you purchase your machine, one of our technicians will come to your workplace or your home, wherever you are having this. We're gonna install the machine and we're gonna give you in-depth training, including on the software, of how to use this machine. And also, as I previously mentioned, this is just one of our many machines. You can visit our website, am.co.za, our YouTube page, Achievement Matters, or another website called sorted.co.za. On these websites, you'll be able to see all of our other range of machineries, from the small routers, plasma cutters, fiber lasers, all the way up to large format and even sublimation printers. This is how, as a company, we are helping the Southern African region, including Africa at large, to make money from the small industries to all the way to the big industries. Watch these videos, take advantage of them. There's a lot of money to be made. Now go do that.